When you're part of the RC hobby, soldering is just one of those things that is unavoidable. Some people overthink it, some people underthink it, but, but there are certain situations where you do need to lend some care and some situations that you could probably be a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna show you all the tools that I use to get my soldering jobs done right now on the channel. What's up guys, it's Chad. Welcome back to the Dorky and 40 RC channel. I'm gonna solder on some QS8 connectors onto the DRK right now and wanted to kind of go through and show some of you guys things that I do to help with my soldering. And I've been soldering for a long time. You know, I've been building mini quads and stuff for years. So I have a, a lot of experience. I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm an expert at anything, but I have soldered and ruined many components. Small little solder joints, like on these flight controllers and stuff, bridging pads, motors, everything else like that. Now, when it comes to our NPRC, our RC drag cars, mostly we're just changing connectors. So things are really not too bad and we can be a little bit more aggressive, but there's some situations where you're gonna be more careful and I'm gonna show you those here right now. Most of the stuff that I'm using in this demo is available on Amazon through an affiliate link that I have down in the description below. If you think you got something out of this and you wanna support the channel and pick something up, then that is a fine way to do it and I would appreciate it. So if we take a look at the bench here, we've got a few things going on and I'm just gonna go over a few of them. First of all, I'm just using a regular Weller soldering iron. It has an okay size tip on it. it gets the job for it done for me sometimes you might want a larger tip sometimes you might want to need a smaller tip but this is kind of like a good general tip that i use that works on both my quads and on my rc cars always going to want to keep your tip clean with some type of copper foil or a, a wet sponge pad that any soldering iron will come with definitely want to take care of that and at the end of your soldering job you are going to want to dip a little bit of solder on that just to protect your tip you always want to protect your tip and it keeps it from oxidizing and all that kind of stuff so put a little bit of solder on there at the end turn it off and you'll be good to go now solder and flux are probably the two most important things the first thing you want to do is you want to use a good quality solder now i use kester's i figure if it's good enough for nasa then it's good enough for me and this is a 67 37 mix you can go with 70 30 whatever and that's just basically how much uh actual solder there is compared to the core and you're gonna also want to use some kind of flux now flux paste is something that is kind of handy but it's a little hard to apply and it can also be a little messy but when you figure out how to really use it it really really helps out with your larger type of wires and connectors because it really will just ignite this stuff see this solder does have some flux in it it's really not enough to get the jobs done because the key to everything is to getting in and out with as least amount of time and the most amount of heat transfer i tend to stick with flux pins and these are nice because you could just dab and apply as much flux as you want to on there. This is really handy when taking things apart or putting them together. You know, you're not, you don't really just use solder to put things together. It's also very handy to take things apart because you can create more of a flow and get things apart a lot easier instead of just sitting there laying with your soldering iron on. So those are some pretty helpful things that you want to use. Some other things that you might think about having as well is things like locking pliers, helping hands, those kind of things. You know, our cars are really difficult difficult to work on once things are installed and these connectors are big and the wires are getting heavier so being able to like kind of do things with just your hands and not burn yourself or do a bad job is kind of difficult so you're definitely going to need you know some kind of locking pliers maybe a couple sets would actually help out so i'm going to grab another pair actually before we do this job the one thing that's really not that important for rc but it's just nice to have is of course some kind of volt meter and the biggest reason for the voltmeter is for a continuity check and i'll show you why here on some motors so we got two different kind of motors here we've got this trinity and we also have this phantom here now if you look at the phantom you can see that it's got big solder tabs right here on top 
And if you just lay heat onto these things, the solder will pretty much just collect on the top there, as you can see, and it won't flow down. This whole board down in here actually has the traces that come all the way down into here. And I actually had this problem with my Trinity 21.5 uh, for my buggy. The thing did not like heat at all. It literally sucked the solder down in there and bridged the connectors together. So if you have tabs like this, just think about that whenever you are soldering them. You know, you don't want to like lay the, the motor wire on there and just heat the whole thing up like crazy because what will happen is that it'll just pull the solder down into here and you could bridge your motor. So if you ever get into a situation where you've soldered up a new motor and you have no reason so you just don't know why it's not working or it's not spinning correctly, then you're gonna wanna check and make sure that you did not bridge two of the poles together down there. And a lot of the times you can tell like even if it's not powered up or hooked up, if you bridge two of the poles together, you actually won't be able to spin the motor. And that's just how like the whole magnet thing and everything works inside of the here. So if, if it's the poles are bridged, then it won't spin in your hand. So I have my soldering iron heated up all the way, 850 degrees. I like to get in and out, like I said, and we're gonna be go ahead and putting on some of these QS8 connectors. And anytime that we're soldering things together, we're going to do a couple things. We're actually going to be tinning it, which is, uh, you know, we're going to apply solder to each end of the joint. So like in this case, the wire and the connector. And then what we're going to do is solder the two together. Now, some of you guys might be shaking your head right now saying that uh, this is a little too basic. But, uh, you know, have you seen online of uh, manufacturers blasting people for soldering jobs? I have, which, by the way, is very, very unprofessional. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of the way some of the people are, even the manufacturers in this hobby and their representatives. It's kind of sad. All right, so we got the glasses off for this one here. So we're going to be putting a female QS8 connector onto the DRK here. Of course, we've got... Uh, the male um, or whichever one, the one that you slide into on the battery. And when you do batteries, just remember that you never cut both of these together at the same time, just one at a time. So if you cut through at the same time, you're gonna bridge yourself. So make sure you got some nice wire strippers as well. That kind of definitely is gonna help you out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tin up this QS8 connector. So the way these work is pretty nice. All you do is just lock them into place and then I just kind of turn the dial here until things are nice and solid. And I'm gonna take my flux pen here and give it a couple shakes and a dab and you can see that we've got some flux coming out there. And all I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of flux inside the connector here. And then we're going to get some of our solder here and this solder is kind of thin you know they do sell this in different thicknesses as well so you might have to take a lot on there so i always like to tend the tip first and just make sure that's all good get it all cleaned up and cleaned off and then i just put that on there a little bit and some heat and you should see it just start to take Looks like the QS8 is gonna take a little bit of extra heat and everything's flowing and that will be good enough right there. You don't need to fill up that whole canal or anything like that. So we'll do this one again. We'll just lay that on there for a couple seconds and let that heat up really good. And then we'll just start dumping it in there. And... There we go, it's taking it now. Let's put a little bit more on the side there. There we go. So again, with connectors, we can be a lot more aggressive than we can with motors. We don't necessarily have to worry about nuking or hurting anything. Now, if you do just lay the heat to these things really bad, you'll notice that you'll start to heat it up a little too much and you will actually push the connectors through the other side. So you want to try to uh, avoid doing that. So now we've got our two wires coming off of our DRK here and they are stripped back and we need to tin them up. And I think what we'll do is just try to use some of the soldering paste here and give you guys a demonstration of that. So this stuff again is a little difficult to work with. 
um, I've kind of found the best way is just to use my finger and dig some of it out. And then just going to apply it to the wire here. I think the lid might have been off of that and got a little janky on me. Now, I'm not going to tie this wire down or nothing like that, but you definitely want to make sure that uh, you're not over any electronics or anything like that. And we're just going to apply the solder and the heat. Yeah, don't do that. Horrible example. Use the helping hands and stuff, like I said. All right, so for this one, we've just got it all tightened up back there with our helping hands pliers and i'm just going to take the flux and go ahead and dab some flux on to the wire and now this should go a lot smoother so we're just going to apply some heat to the wire. You can see the flux already burning and then bring in the solder and uh, boom, it's just going right in there. I like to kind of start on one side and apply the solder. And then once I get some heat going on, I like to go ahead and move to the other side and just watch everything just flow through to make sure that it's going all the way through the wire. All right now that everything is tinned up and ready to go, we are going to put a little bit more flux inside here just to help us out and we'll put some on the wire as well and this should be pretty easy now we should just be able to lay that right there and we want to put actually put our connector on first so let's go ahead and slip that through there and we are on the positive side so we'll just go ahead and you can see that that is melting already probably be easier if i had a bigger tip and once you got it in there and everything's going and flowing you'll just kind of see everything just start merging together and just pull yourself away and there you go you got a good solid connection does not need to be completely filled up with solder or anything you just want to make things that make sure that things are shiny so you don't have a cold joint and this baby is not going nowhere my connector is barely warm so i did a good job when it came to applying heat just enough all right now we're going to do the other side so we're going to apply some more flux to both of our ends and i really like the way that worked out last time so let's just go ahead and put the heat on the connector here and once everything starts to flow then we will bring in we will bring in our wire so things are starting to flow and we're going to drop the wire in there and leave the heat on it for a couple seconds and it's starting to come together and we'll take it off and maybe i'll just hit the top of it here real quick there we go everything started to flow together got in and got out there we go we got a super solid qs8 connector now we didn't damage our plug. Everything can go on there. Eek, these things are tough to work with. And we got power and no smoke. So we've obviously done everything correctly. Now, if you're doing something like an XT60 or an XT90, of course, this is way easier and you'll need a lot less heat. The bigger things are, the more 
generous you could be as you could see but definitely they will be a little bit more difficult i don't think that turned out as that bad of a demo things are never as easy of course when you're doing them on a video and you've got microphones and everything else in front of you but i am not going to make any kind of excuses so i think that's a good job and hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of comfort on things that will help you out always forget to turn on when you're done, always remember to turn off your soldering iron, put your cap back on your flux pin. I have ruined a lot of those because of that. And then just like I showed you this solder paste, this flux paste might actually be ruined because of that. And uh, yeah, we're good to go now. So the DRK that's been flashed, everything is working. And now I can hook up a battery to it and do the radio calibration after the flashing. And we're one step closer to getting this old brisket DR10 ready for the road. So if you guys have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Appreciate every one of you. Peace.